Hello, I'm Cameron Muir and welcome to the British Columbia Real Estate Association's Housing Market Update for October 2010. MLS residential sales in the province increased 2% in September compared to August on a seasonally adjusted basis. This was the second consecutive month of rising home sales and it now appears that July may have been the trough in 2010 housing demand. However, home sales are still noticeably lower than last fall's frenetic pace, down 36% from just one year ago. On the supply side, the number of active MLS residential listings declined by 4% in September, the fourth consecutive month of an inventory contraction. Declining inventories can help to firm up home prices even in the face of below average housing demand. Market conditions across the province still favor home buyers in most markets. However, these conditions are eroding. The supply of inventory in the province has declined from 11.1 months in June to 8.9 months in this September. A balanced market typically exhibits five to seven months of supply in the marketplace. The ratio of home sales to active listings has increased and is welcome relief for many home sellers. However, as always, local markets can vary significantly, so contact your local realtor to identify market conditions in your community. The average MLS residential price in the province increased 1.2% in September to $493,800, after declining 0.8% in August. However, viewers should be cautious of single month changes in average prices, as average prices can skew up or down in any particular month in proportion with the relative value of homes sold. Compared to last year, the average MLS residential price increased 4%. However, the year-over-year -year change in home prices has decelerated and the large gains experienced earlier in the year are not expected through the balance of 2010. Now let's take a look at real estate board activity around the province. This month's In Focus features population growth and the housing stock. BC's population growth can be divided into three components. The natural increase, which equals the number of births minus deaths, net international migration, and net interprovincial migration. Less than 20% of our population growth is attributable to the natural increase, and its proportion is declining over time. The natural increase also has the least impact of the three on housing demand, as children born today will unlikely consume additional housing units for at least 20 years or more. Net international migration makes up 70% of the provincial population growth and is a significant contributor to additional housing demand and expansion of the housing stock. While net interprovincial migration, individuals moving from BC to other provinces, can vary widely, depending on how attractive employment opportunities are in BC compared to other provinces in Canada. In fact, total net migration is an important factor in BC's housing markets. It's a simple equation. The more people we have, the more households are formed, the more housing is demanded overall. Housing starts wax and wane according to market conditions. Periods of undersupply are typically followed by periods of oversupply, and vice versa. In 2007, 39,000 housing starts were recorded in the province. By 2009, housing starts fell 40% to a low of 16,000 units. However, over the next several years, the number of new households in the province is expected to easily draw down the current inventory of unsold units and trigger home builders to produce in excess of 30,000 units a year once again. Over the next 10 years, 320,000 new households are projected to form in the province and, migra and migration will be a significant driver. 
The oversupply of new housing prevalent today will likely turn into an undersupply before too long, leading to a marked increase in new home construction activity. That's it for the October Housing Market Update. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you next month. Bye for now.